taste of what we could see at launch. You know, this is only a single booster. And at launch, we're going to have two of those. So it's going to be a great sight to see. Two, and, and then the four RS-25s. Bueno, de vino dos minutos, eh, para el primer motor. Eh, estamos ahí, vamos a tratar de poner pantalla completa. Uh, what American ingenuity, what the American workforce can put together uh, when we launch Artemis 1 here in a couple weeks. I can't wait to be there to watch it. I absolutely agree. Well, thank you, Reed, for that great insight. <laughs> Now remember, we're going to have some booster experts join me here after the test to answer your questions. Use that hashtag AskNASA on social media to send those to us. Now let's get ready to fire up this booster. You're going to hear a countdown from the test conductor, followed by a two-minute booster firing. We're going to cut away, and we'll be back here after the test. Commit the motor. And with you on five, the motor is committed. Hey, farmer, I got good news for you all. That object that we were tracking. T minus 60 seconds. No action tonight. Hey, great news. Thanks for the update. All high-speed systems are recording. T minus 50 seconds. TVC is go for static test. Houston and good news from spacecraft communicator Alex Canalakos. T minus 40 seconds. T minus 30 seconds. T minus 20 seconds. T minus 15 seconds. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, fire. Activate head in CO2. Oh, piso, el color del piso. Activated. Piso. Activate quench tool forward command. Activate aft CO2. No, 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 no. Qué loco. Qué loco. Activated. Ballistic script has ended. TVC power is disabled. Ah, sí, acelerando. Vamos arriba. No, apagar. Apagar. No es el dióxido. Dióxido carbono o algo así para, para suprimir las llamas. Plus 160 seconds. Es instantáneo, es impresionante. ¿Ah? Vamos a repetirlo, ¿eh? vamos a repetirlo, vale la pena. Plus 170 seconds, high speed data operator stop recording. High speed recording is complete. Low speed data operators, stop recording. 
Ya terminó para ellos, ya dejaron hasta de grabar. Vamos a esperar un poquito más para pasarlo para atrás. Mientras vemos arriba, chiquito, que Samantha Cristoforetti y Artemis siguen con la caminata espacial. T plus, 3 minutes, 30 seconds. Post fire crew, report to the instrument room. 3 minutos, 30 segundos. Report to the instrument room. Si, sí, esto no es para Artemis 1, obviamente, para algunos más adelante. Mm, estos booters originalmente eran reutilizables. Son idénticos al transbordador espacial, solo que tienen un aero más. En vez de tener cuatro, tienen cinco. Son más grandes, son de, de la combustión dura más. Y posiblemente los hayan optimizado también. Welcome back. Toda esa gente que vemos ahí son empleados del Ortocruman de NASA y algunos invitados. Fue un show para ellos, ¿no? Here with me to talk about that test and to dis to answer your questions, we have Julia Kudabande, motor team lead for SLS boosters at NASA. Esta es la líder de la parte de motor de boosters. Rose, chemical engineer. Y a la izquierda, ingeniera quema de química de Norto Kruman. So, uh, before we begin, I just wanted to say, you know, we heard the test conductor talking a little bit before the uh, the firing. Can you explain a little bit more about what they were saying? So I'll start with Julia. Yeah, thanks, Alyssa. Wow, that was fantastic. fantastic. So yeah, we heard the test conductor before the firing of the motor. Uh, she gave the go for test. Um, the test counted down and they committed the motor. They armed the motor. And then at muy impresionante ese fuego de ese, ese cohete. Bueno, ya la señal a los editores para encender. We have a nozzle assembly which had a nozzle plug and that would have come out as pressure built up inside the motor. We also have an aft skirt assembly and it houses our advanced booster electronic thrust vector control system and that vectored the nozzle during the test. For Julia. Vamos a ver, vamos a ver. Low speed data recording complete. Bien encendido. 4 3 2 1 Activate head in CO2. Activated. Activate quench tool forward command. 
activates aft CO2. Activated. Mientras, abajo de todo, vemos una gran actividad en el booster, en el booster, en el, en el SN24, en Boca Chica, ¿no? Mientras hacía todo esto, conseguí colocar todas las ventanitas, alinear todos los patitos, ¿no? Plus 170 seconds, high speed data operator stop recording. High speed recording is complete. Low speed data operators, stop recording. Low speed data recording complete. T plus three minutes, 30 seconds. Post fire crew, report to the instrument room. Post fire crew, report to the instrument room. Welcome back, and wow, what an amazing sight to see. This powerful solid rocket booster fired up. Again, we're here at the Northrop Grumman facility in Promontory, Utah, where we just witnessed a two minute booster firing of a solid rocket booster for the SLS rocket. Here with me to talk about that test and to, dis to answer your questions, we have Julia Cotabande, motor team lead for SLS boosters at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center. And we have Jessica Rose, chemical engineer for Northrop Grumman, Estoy colocando otra cosa. Activate head and CO2. Activated. Activate quench tool forward command. Activates aft CO2. Activated. 
Explicit script has ended. TVC power is disabled. Plus 160 oh, yeah. seconds. Alex, Samantha. Plus 170 seconds. High speed data operator, stop recording. You are waiting at MRM2? High speed recording is complete. Low speed data operators, stop recording. Gonna be something that will get us to the moon, not to Mars. Uh, Low speed data recording to the moon. How about <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Estamos escuchando el NSF ahora. But uh, let's see. Uh, actually, oh, no, uh, do you think that the FAA will require Starship to have a launch escape system? And if so, how would they do it? Hmm, shall I take that one first? Because that has been the question that's been brought quite a few times. There's no obvious uh, launch escape tower on top of the Starship. It's something where they're probably working more towards the vehicle itself being the abort mode where if the boost is going wrong that makes sense i personally have not got my head around what happens if the actual ship is having a problem during this at the point where it's still going uphill and that itself can't be the escape system because that's the vehicle that's going wrong so i'm not too sure about the nearest plans on that but i've got a funny feeling that alex might know something it's not been answered has it it's not been addressed properly but yeah i, I, I always I, I always it sounds a bit too forgiving really but i always take the opinion that there's much cleverer people working at SpaceX on these vehicles than any of us on here and they will have worked out exactly how that works for crew rating the vehicle I think the important distinction to make right now is that this vehicle will be cargo 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 Starlink 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 big telescopes what have you it will not be launching people for a long time not after many many flights Elon put it many many flights before to put people on board this vehicle and by then I'm sure they'll have some kind of system that mitigates the issue of crew safety in the bot scenario. Alright. Uh, we got uh, a couple of questions I want to hit really quick. First of all, what is a spin prime test? I guess we should have talked about this slightly earlier. I'm realizing I'm not sure we really went into detail today. So the spin prime test that we saw happen again a few minutes ago um, is basically flowing liquid oxygen through the engine, through the pump, spinning the LOX pumps on the Raptor engine but not igniting anything. So the pre-burners on the fuel side don't light, obviously the main chamber. Tom, Tom Bogart, NSF, nos está diciendo que hace un rato hubo un, un spin test y que en realidad no es un encendido esto. Lo que hacen es tirar gases y estudiar cómo funciona eh, los gases de oxígeno sin encender. O sea, no, no hay forma de que encienda. La otra vez fue un error. Um, it looked like they were all six engine tests. Uh, it's hard to tell exactly, but it was definitely multiple engines on those previous tests. So, um, Elon Musk Quizás en algún momento lo detengan en el programa, pero no mucho todavía. Tiene que volar mucho esto, ¿ah? la Starship, para probar de que el SLS realmente eh, es obsoleto. Lots of talk about what you think the no earlier than time is, but what's your no later than for the Starship orbital launch tape? Uh, orbital launch test, excuse me. I want to hear. Bueno, y con esto volvemos a la camioneta espacial. Vamos a hablar de este streaming de la prueba de, de motor. Les agradezco muchísimo por haber estado acá. 